Hello, and welcome to this year's Accessibility Summer Showcase 2024. I'm your host, Laura. I'm a white woman with bright blue hair, shaved on one side, wearing a plain black dress. I'll keep this introduction brief, as I know you're here to find out about cool upcoming accessible video games. The Accessibility Summer Showcase aims to be a place for disabled gamers to find out about cool upcoming and recently released video games, while knowing upfront if they're likely to be accessible for them upon release. While not every single video game showcase today is going to be accessible for every single disabled gamer, the aim of the showcase is that, wherever possible, there will be at least a couple of interesting games shown today that are going to be playable for you, no matter who you are. If you'd benefit from audio description or sign language interpreter support, there are American Sign Language, British Sign Language, and audio described versions of the showcase available on youtube.com forward slash Laura K Buzz. If you'd like to find most of this year's showcase titles in a single place, we have a Steam sale page this year. You can find it at the link on screen now. There you'll find this year's showcase titles to wishlist or purchase, alongside last year's showcase titles and a handful of demos. This year's showcase doesn't have a sponsor, so if you'd like to support the Access Ability Summer Showcase, please consider supporting Accessibility at patreon.com forward slash Laura K Buzz. Your support helps the Summer Showcase to exist, alongside accessibility reviews and the Control-Alt-Access podcast. Now, without any further introduction, let's jump into the games. This is Elsie, the upcoming retro-inspired bullet-hell action-platforming roguelike shooter from Night Shift Games and Platonic Friends. Elsie isn't just packed with hyphenated genre tags and Technicolor action, however. The Night Shift team have been hard at work to provide a host of accessibility features to make Elsie as accessible as possible to anyone who wants to play. If you just want to absorb the gorgeous style and play through the story, there's an invincibility mode, which might also come in handy if you're struggling against a particularly tricky boss fight. And to help you focus on the hyperkinetic on-screen action, there are modifiers to allow you to blur, desaturate, or even turn off the backgrounds entirely. There are also options for adjusting the amount of screen shake you experience, to help with this even further. LC is an incredibly colourful game, so it has options to assist those with colour vision deficiency too. Options for player outline and enemy outline also allow you to adjust the hue to your liking, to make sure the Technicolor action is as visible as possible. If you need assistance with reflex mechanics, there will also be an option to adjust the timing required to correctly hit a parry, as well as following up with those all-important counter-attacks. So to recap, there's an invincibility mode, parry and counter-attack timing adjustments, font size modifier, colorblind assistance, player and enemy outline options, rumble strength and screen shake modifiers, and options to blur, desaturate, or remove backgrounds. LC is a love letter to retro action platformers of old, while packing in plenty of new elements to give the genre a modern twist, and we want as many people as possible to be able to enjoy the experience. Please consider wishlisting the game on Steam today if you like what you see, and stay tuned to the Night Shift and Platonic socials for more info soon. I'm Ria. I am part of a two-person indie game studio based out of India called I Miss My Friend Studio. We are working on our first title, Fishbowl. Fishbowl is a slice of life, coming of age story told over a month. There are no forced day-night cycles in Fishbowl, and you can take all the time you need to explore Alo's house. You video call loved ones and have branching conversations with them in a clear sans serif font. You work from home as a junior video editor. Here you match snippets to the correct track as per color or icon. This game has no fail state and no matter how you do, your colleagues will cheer you on and support you. You sort through puzzles to rediscover childhood memories. No time limits or penalties here. Take your time to go through all the sentimental objects Alo has received, whether it's through keyboard, mouse or the controller. Do care tasks and get to know yourself better one day at a time. Currently, Fishbowl has few options to change the volume of sound effects and music and also an option to turn off screen shake. We also make sure to have both visual and audio cues for important events. Take your time to notice them as there is no rush to respond. 
Our demo starts off with a content warning as it addresses and explores themes of grief, loss, loneliness and isolation. We are a small team and we have a lot more to do before release. We are working on accessibility specific settings like removing screen sway, turning off text effects and typing, providing a larger font size, an option to slow down video editing and adding a way to skip the puzzles. We have a long way to go and we will try to do our best. We hope you will come along. Thank you. Waco the Mass Gatherer is an exciting third-person adventure game developed by Zero Games. Immerse yourself in the role of Waco, a mysterious gecko embarking on a quest to collect the most powerful mask of his world. Explore diverse landscape, from vibrant villages to dark forests. Each environment is carefully crafted to immerse players in a rich sensory experience with ambient sounds everywhere, like bird songs, flowing water, and echoing footsteps on every surfaces guiding your exploration. Our maps are thoughtfully designed to ensure clear auditory cues, allowing players to navigate with ease and fully immerse themselves in the world of Waco. Dive into a world full of quests and puzzles, from helping villagers to unraveling ancient mysteries. Our intuitive inventory systems make managing items a breeze, with color-coded references and clear icons, ensuring accessibilities for all players. And with the ability to customize sounds in the main menu, players can tailor the game to their preferences. Prepare for epic battles as you meet formidable enemies throughout your journey. Each mask grants unique abilities, empowering players to adapt their fighting styles and overcome challenges. And with distinct sounds for every enemy, player can rely on auditory cues to anticipate and react to threats, making the game accessible to all. We are committed to making gaming inclusive for everyone. That's why we are doing our best to develop a colorblind, friendly game with carefully chosen color palette that ensure clarity and accessibility for all players. We invite you to embark on a memorable adventure where exploration, puzzles and epic battles await. Join us and uncover the secrets of the whimsical world of Waco the Mass Gatherer. My name is Chad Michael Balton. My pronouns are he, him. I am a blind podcast host, accessibility consultant, professional speaker, and this is why accessibility in gaming is important to me. I will always remember how back in 2019, when Kingdom Hearts 3 had just released, how excited I was to play the game. I had been a longtime fan of the series and was finally ready to experience the end of the trilogy. However, at this point in time, I was unaware of how bad my retinitis pigmentosa had gotten and just how much of my usable vision I really had lost. I can remember not only not being able to get through the first world, but just not knowing where I needed to go or what I needed to do to progress throughout the game. I will never forget how upset I was and how I ended up calling my mother and father, crying to them on the phone, and just telling them, hey, I think I have to give up on gaming. I think that because of my blindness, I can no longer keep gaming. And it was a pretty big thing for me because growing up, video games had been the best way for me to cope with losing my vision and just not being able to control what was going on in my life. I had all intentions to never play a video game again, and for the next two years, I kept true to that promise. I thought that I would go the rest of my life without playing another video game. But, you know, in 2021, my brother-in-law, he sent me a text telling me about a game called The Last of Us Part Two, and how I should check it out which I thought was crazy because I remember being able to play the game, the first game that is, back when I had usable vision. And I was just thinking to myself, there's no way I'm going to be able to play the sequel due to my limited amount of vision. And boy, was I wrong. I, I, I could have not been any more wrong. And it was a welcome surprise for myself to boot up the game and realize that my vision wasn't the problem. It was that up until this point, games really just weren't being made to accommodate gamers like myself and so many others. If it wasn't for the work that Brandon Cole and Naughty Dog did on The Last of Us Part Two, I don't think I would ever have gotten back into gaming. And I can only imagine where my life would be right now if I didn't get back into gaming. 
I owe accessibility and gaming so much. Hello, my name is Stefan Gagne, my pronouns are he, him, and I'm a physically disabled gamer. I run Fiction Factory Games, and we make character-driven narrative games such as Arcade Spirits, Arcade Spirits The New Challengers, Penny Larceny, Gig Economy Supervillain, and our upcoming title, The Shadow Over Cyberspace. Today, I'd like to demonstrate some of the accessibility technology that we've built into our games. I'll use our latest game, Penny Larceny, to demonstrate. In this comic book romantic comedy, you play as a criminal underling named Penny, working for various supervillains to help put food on the table. All of our games feature a self-voicing mode. Just tap the V key at any time to activate. Self-voicing enabled. In this mode, extra narration is used to describe imagery, and user interfaces are streamlined. Let's demonstrate with this scene where Penny, the woman in the black and white striped shirt and mask, is going out on a date with Farsight, the superheroine in the colorful but practical costume. Farsight, I'm so glad we're finally able to talk outside of our day jobs. It's nice to get away from all that mask and cape stuff. Penny, absolutely. Hmm, what's a good first date question? The beeping sound lets players know that it's time to make a choice. Alright, let's see, what do we pick here? What are her hobbies? Sewing, stamp collecting, virtual pet raising? Would she rather fight one horse-sized duck, or 100 duck-sized horses? Penny, I'd like to ask you an important question one scholars and philosophers have wrestled with for generations. Penny, one horse-sized duck or 100 duck-sized horses? Which do you fight? Far sight, oh, horse-sized duck. I actually fought him last week. For sighted players, we have options to help customize the user interface to their needs. You can adjust fonts used by the game, picking between comic book style, a simplified font for easier readability, and the standard open dyslexia font. These changes carry through to user interfaces, dialogue boxes, and more. Dialogue is colored to match the speaking character, or can be set to monochrome. You can also invert the text box to white. Lastly, I'd like to give a little sneak peek into our next game, The Shadow Over Cyberspace, in which the Cthulhu mythos is retold through the apocalyptic lens of the Y2K crisis and 90s internet culture. In this game, we make use of video and screen filters to create retro computer effects. Seen here is an example of that, with an angry woman drawn in pixel art on a laptop screen, with a looping video of fire behind her, and an LCD filter on top. Niarlathotep, speak your piece or go in pieces. Who are you, and what convinced you that approaching the crawling chaos was a good life decision? For players with photosensitivity, we've added the ability to disable these effects. You get the same visuals, but they're a static picture and easier on the eyes. The game also makes use of video during sequences where you watch television. We use open captioning to ensure everyone can enjoy this part of the game, and when using self-voicing mode, additional visual narration is added. Static gives way to the TV23 logo, WYGH TV, Arkham, Innsmouth, Dunwich. A TV test pattern plays through static. Here is a world of communication tailored for your needs of today and tomorrow, bringing together all people in a new era of understanding. Two teenagers visit a 1950s World's Fair exhibit on telecommunications. Moving forward, I'm hoping to ensure all our stories are as accessible as we can make them. Gaming should be for everyone. Thanks for your time, and have a good one. Hello, I'm Lucy Blundell, the indie developer behind Videoverse, which is a narrative adventure game focusing on character development, friendship and love in the old school internet. As a disabled developer, I wanted to include positive disability representation in the story, but the game itself has many accessibility features that I'd like to share with you today. Videoverse can be controlled using mouse, keyboard, touchscreen or controller. There are no button combos, no quick responses required, no strobe effects, and the game is generally low pressure. Navigation is also large and clear, with audio cues upon selection. 
Videoverse is made in RemPy, the visual novel engine, which already includes several accessibility features. There's self-voicing in separate volume bars for sound, music, and voice. The default font can be switched for a clear, easy-to-read font, and all fonts are large and high contrast. If you miss a thought or conversation, you can check the log to see what you may have missed. And when it comes time to saving, you can manually save at any point or use the autosave feature. Though there are some additional features too. There is a typing noise during chat conversations, which can be turned off in the preferences menu. Closed captions are also available, but audio is not required to play Videoverse. And since Videoverse covers heavy topics, such as depression, abuse, and neglect, there is also a content warning list that can be accessed. The default Videoverse theme is black and white, clear and high contrast. But there are many different colour themes, some of which are colourblind friendly, and these can be changed at any time. And on the pause menu, there is a tip button in the top left corner. Use this to get a hint if you ever feel stuck. If there's a feature missing that you'd like to see, please send me an email at contact at gamesbykimoku.com. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoy the old school experience of Videoverse. Hello everyone, I am Sightless Combat. First off, thank you so much to the organizers for inviting me back here. It's amazing to be a part of this event once again. Just by way of a self-description, I'm wearing an RNIB Design for Every Gamer shirt and a cap with my logo on it, which is two swords crossed over an eye, as well as over-ear headphones. And in the background behind me, you can see numerous items of gaming memorabilia, including what has lovingly been termed as a pop waffle, a display holding various pop vinyl figures from various franchises that I've accumulated, as well as a gold lancer from Gears of War 4, the replica of that iconic weapon. So, for those who don't know me, I am an award-winning, multi-credited accessibility consultant and content creator from the UK, as well as being the Accessible Gaming Officer for RNIB, that is Royal National Institute of Blind People, the UK-based sight loss charity. And crucially, I am a gamer without sight, having never had any sights whatsoever. Now, I'm here to talk about, once again, a genre that some might question how you would even make accessible for anyone with no vision to work with, and one that, from what I've heard, a fair number of people are interested in. City builders. Enter Cellular City, a puzzle game about building, well, tiny cities. When I first heard about this game, it sounded really intriguing to me, not just because of the wonderfully alliterative name, and the developer is keen to make this as accessible as possible. So I would highly recommend giving this a look if you're even remotely interested in something new and in my case, relatively unfamiliar. But I'm not gonna try and spoil any of this because here is a little trailer to show you just what this game is all about, as well as of course, its accessibility features. Here is Cellular City from developer Callum Deary. This is Cellular City, a puzzle game about building tiny cities. Cellular City's primary mechanic is rules around neighbouring buildings. For example, you can't have a steel foundry next to a block of flats. A3 is a flats. B3 is empty. B2 is empty. Foundry placed in B2. On the other hand, some buildings like each other, like stations and flats. C2 is a station. B2 is empty. Flats placed in B2. It has text-to-speech and audio description of levels, uh, with a focus on accessibility for blind and low vision players. This includes settings to modify text-to-speech volume, rate, and voice, alongside keyboard and controller support. Start building. Level audio description starts automatically on level load, but can be reprompted by the player at any time. Describing city. A1 is empty, B1 is a rail, C1 is a rail, A2 is a hill, B2 is a mine, C2 is a station, A3 is empty, B3 is empty, C3 is a rail. The player's movement round the level. A2 is a hill. It's also described 
as are their actions on placing buildings. A three is empty. Flats placed in a three. The player can also prompt inspections of buildings to find out more about them. A flat's brutalist streets in the sky. Always controversial with neighbours near and far. So if you're interested in a puzzle game about the tensions in a modern city, check out Cellular Cities demo on itch.io. Hi, I'm the developer of Upheaval, a text-based open-world roguelike adventure where you can explore the wilderness, search for magic treasures, and shift the balance of power for 30 in-game days before a powerful magician brings big changes to the world around you. Upheaval is turn-based, with no timed actions and no complex controls. All text is big, easy to read, and high contrast. The background can be disabled, turned to dark mode, or both. Upheaval is completely blind playable without sighted assistance. You can use your favorite screen reader in the command line version. Abandoned tower, armory, 26 days left, early night, 5 slash 6. The muffled sound of a nightbird can be heard outside. 1. Go up the stairs, no time. 2. Go down the stairs, no time. 3. Open the chest, no time. 4. Search this area, 1 time, random, time searched, 0. 5. Make camp, 2 time. Or the customizable text to speech in the graphical version. You're in abandoned tower, top floor. You're on the top floor of the tower. Stairs lead down to the floor below. Stone windows look out in all directions over the prairies. It's cold up here. The stone walls are sturdy around you. Press tab to highlight an option. Go down the stairs, no time. Look out over the prairies, one time. Search this area, one time. Success is random. Make camp, two time. This is the last option. Volume levels can be adjusted separately for music, sound effects, ambient sound, and text to speech. Keyboard and controller inputs are both supported, and control remapping will be added before release. Difficulty levels can be adjusted either before or during each game. You can grant more in-game time, conjure items, teleport, use the rewind button planned before release, or any combination of these. You can try the free demo of Upheaval on Steam today. Wishlist Upheaval on Steam to support this project. If you have any questions about accessibility, please reach out using my contact info at upheavalgame.com. Hi everyone, it's your host Laura here again. I want to take some time today to talk about a game that we wanted to include in this year's Accessibility Summer Showcase, and timings just did not work out for putting together a formal trailer to showcase this game, but I still really think that this game is doing some interesting stuff and I think it is worth talking about, so I'm going to put together a little tease just to try and tell you a little bit about a game that I, I, I wish we could have included more formally here today. Periphery Synthetic is a chill, relaxed, non-violent metroidvania that takes place in first person and is particularly notable for being designed to be able to be played without any visual input, to be able to be played purely with audio cues. You play as someone who has been tasked with surveying a planetary system in an upgradable exosuit, and are able to explore by following all sorts of musical audio cues that are built into the soundscape of the game to collect materials that will allow you to craft and upgrade your movement abilities, while doing this sort of non-linear exploration of a planet. It is a really unique game, trying some very interesting stuff in terms of how it presents its exploration cues. There is a demo available to play on itch.io if you search for Periphery Synthetic EP. The full game will be coming to Steam in summer of 2024. You can find a link to it on the Steam sale page this year that we have for all of the games included in the Accessibility Summer Showcase. I know that the developer of this game was real frustrated to not be able to have a trailer ready in time for our submission deadline, and I really wanted to still be able to include them, so I've put this together and hopefully 
this gives you a sense of this really interesting game that I think is worth checking out. Trash Goblin is a wholesome and cozy shopkeeping game where you uncover and clean trinkets other people have thrown away, then upcycle them to sell to an endless parade of colorful and quirky customers. You can then spend your savings to upgrade your shop, buy new and better tools to unlock more activities, and even expand your business to exciting new districts across town. Trash Goblin has always been intentionally designed to be enjoyed by as many people as possible. There are no fail states or time pressures, no skill gates to content, and no fast action. It's played in first person with a limited set of views, and no need to rush anywhere. This gentle pace is at the core of what it means to be a true goblin. We're doing everything we can to help players of all kinds enjoy the tactile, scrunchy, and satisfying mechanics we've built. That effort starts with us listening to our community. You asked us to add an option to allow players to sponge trinkets clean without holding a button down, so we did. And you asked for optional auto-chisel features for the chipping gameplay, so we implemented them. Thanks so much to our community for helping us make the game more accessible for everyone. Though a range of ongoing work we've undertaken to ensure you're able to enjoy Trash Goblin to the fullest. The mouse is used for every interaction, with optional keyboard shortcuts for navigation, and we're implementing controller support too. Tutorials use button glyphs for clarity. And the game's default font uses a clean and readable sans-serif typeface with user-defined sizing. During conversations the player can skip the text's appearance, and a button press confirms they've read everything. And there are a selection of audio and volume settings to take advantage of, plus text speed settings and more. But of course we want to do even more, so please consider wishlisting the game on Steam, and play the demo there now. Then come and talk to us in our Discord, and suggest even more improvements we can make. Trash Goblin. What kind of goblin do you want to be? Hi everyone, my name is Revia, and I'm a disabled and chronically ill content creator from Norway, and also a co-host of the podcast Control Alt Access, together with Laura. I'm a white woman in my 30s with dark red hair, wearing a yellow flowy shirt sitting in my game room. Last year, Whitethorn Games brought us Botany Manor, a game where you play as Arabella, a retired botanist living in the 19th century England. In this game, you're working toward finishing a botanical research book, Forgotten Flora, by growing fascinating plants, looking for mysterious clues and solving cozy puzzles. But not only is this game a wonderful little adventure, it's also accessible for me. From the focus on cognitive accessibility through good information in the options, a well-made journal system, and a bunch of ways to reduce motion sickness, all the way to more motor accessibility with Toggle to run and zoom. This game feels like it was made for me. So this is why I'm so happy to see that White Torn games are back this year, and I can't wait to see what they have to show us all. Are you ready to jump into action as a cute slime? Slime Heroes has you covered. In this adorable, souls-like, 3D action-adventure game, you have a myriad of options available to make the experience more accessible. Enemies and bosses have different damage scales, allowing you to up the challenge or cushion the blows. You can also slow the enemy's attack speed, or increase your own stamina recharge. You can extensively change your cursor for better contrast and visibility based on your preferences. There is also the ability to toggle on double jump for more control and distance in platforming sections. Timed puzzles can also be made longer so that you can have more time than you normally would to complete sections. You can outline your slime with either black or white to contrast the many colorful environments of the game for improved visibility. Enable visible hitboxes to allow you to see the exact movement of an attack or enemy, enabling you to be sure all of your attacks land as you eliminate even the most challenging corrupted enemies. This is just a sample of the things to come from Slime Heroes. In Magical Delicacy, you play as Flora, a young witch who's just moved to the harbor town of Grot to grow her magical abilities. In the game, you make new friends, discover new places, find the secrets, cook all sorts of delightful foods, and get entangled in an enchanting story. 
To help Flora traverse the city, there is an easy platforming option that disables disappearing platforms that would otherwise require precise timing or quick movements during puzzle or platforming areas. To improve visibility, there are also several high contrast options. You can highlight Flora's outline so she'll always stand out against her background. Additionally, you can darken the background so that the contrast can be even more visible. Beyond that, when having conversations with the mini characters of Magical Delicacy, there are even more accessibility options. You can disable any moving dialogue effects, autoplay dialogue, and you can change the game's text to a more legible font. Finally, we've worked to make the control scheme more accessible, allowing you to rebind controls on the keyboard, mouse, or gamepad, and you can play the game without any buttons. We hope you take the time to come and visit the beautiful city of Grot with us in Magical Delicacy later this year. Hi, I'm Zoe Reyes, the Usability and Accessibility Specialist at Whitethorn Games. I'm a woman with blue hair just past shoulder length, in a light pink t-shirt, and wearing glasses. Making your games more accessible is a great goal to have, but sometimes it can feel daunting as an indie dev. To help you get started, I've got a starter kit of some features you can include to help you reach your goals. One of the easiest ways to get started is to take a look at developer tools or options. A lot of times they can be great accessibility options, commands that reset the player or give the player increased health or stamina, or more time to defeat a puzzle are all great ways to accommodate players who have reduced reaction time. By looking at the way you use your tools to test the game yourself, you can come up with surprising ways to help your players. Keep contrast in mind. This may sound rather simple, but checking how contrastive the player's view is may make the difference in making the game playable for someone with low vision or colorblindness. Double check your inputs. Things like repetitive inputs and buttonholds can be limiting for the player. Offering alternatives such as eliminating the need for quick button presses or the ability to toggle a sustained button press is always a great idea, and if you can, try including input remapping. Including subtitles is another great way to make your game more inclusive, especially if your game has a lot of spoken dialogue. A lot of times, you already have a script ready to go, too. You can even go a step further and add subtitles for non-dialogue sounds in your game, such as environmental sounds or sounds that guide hearing players to act. Sometimes game objectives can be unclear. Instances where things are conveyed by color only or sound alone are often very inaccessible. Try conveying information in multiple ways if you can. I hope those tips help you get started. Keep in mind, this is not an exhaustive list, but the good news is, is that there are loads of resources online from this amazing community. I recommend checking out the Games Accessibility Guidelines website, the Xbox Accessibility Guidelines, and the IGDA Games Accessibility SIG YouTube. Talking with other developers who are working on features to make their games more accessible is also one of the greatest resources we have. Our greatest strength is sharing the knowledge we gain with each other because together we can make video games an even more inclusive space for everyone. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Milan Patel, also known as Patelosaur. I am an accessibility consultant and content creator, and I live with a disease called Duchenne muscular dystrophy. And I have been gaming pretty much my whole life. And that started getting difficult about 10 years ago. And this was at a time before accessibility was more widely implemented. So I kind of felt like I wasn't going to be able to game again anymore or any longer in the future as well. But now since accessibility is more widely implemented and there are many more tools that you could use now, I am now able to play more games than I was before my physical difficulty started. So accessibility is something that's quite important to me. And it's really great to see that it's being more widely implemented and more people are starting to learn about it. Hey everyone, I'm Kevin from Manavoid Entertainment, and today we're going to talk about some of the accessibility features in Rainbow Billy The Curse of the Leviathan. Let's jump right into it. We've been asked how we made the game accessible for people with colorblindness. Luckily, our technical director Alexis is actually colorblind himself, so in a game about recoloring the world of imagination, it was important to get this one right. That's why you'll always see symbols associated with colors. The 12 colors used to represent different emotions have all been given a symbol which is always present throughout the game. 
Items that you can interact with in the game are always animated and highlighted with color too. We used forced perspectives which makes it easier to play with a single joystick. The camera also rotates automatically to help with puzzles and secrets. There's a lot to explore in Rainbow Billy and we didn't want anyone to feel lost. That's why whenever you board Friendship, the camera will always point to your current objective seamlessly. You can also find your current objective on your compass and map that you can access at any time. There is no time limit or fail state in Rainbow Billy. This is a conscious decision to avoid the pressure of being put on the spot or failing tasks because you didn't react in time, so you can try again as many times as you want. It was important to us that the level of difficulty in confrontations wouldn't affect the experience, so we added a difficulty slider. Lowering the difficulty doesn't change your strategy, it just gives you more leeway for errors by reducing damage taken. There's also a few options to tweak how dialogue is displayed. We've made dialogue fun to read with a lot of animations and effects. However, we know this can make the text harder to read for some people, so we've implemented the Open Dyslexic font, a dyslexia-friendly option to make it easier to read. You can also change the speed at which dialogue is displayed, and also change the character voices if you prefer more retro sounds, or none at all. Rainbow Billy the Curse of the Leviathan has so much more to offer. If you'd like to give it a try, head over to our Steam page and get ready to recolor the world. Thank you for your time and have a great day. Rainbow Billy the Curse of the Leviathan. Hi everyone, quick update here from Laura. Uh, the folks behind Rainbow Billy, The Curse of the Leviathan, have actually given us some Steam codes for the game to give away during today's Accessibility Summer Showcase. If you would like to be entered into a random draw to win one of five copies of Rainbow Billy, The Curse of the Leviathan, uh, you can head over to at WeAreManavoid on Twitter and find the competition tweet. Uh, five people will win Steam codes for the game by responding to the tweet up on uh, Manavoid's Twitter. Uh, you can enter between now and Sunday, June 9th at 11.59pm Eastern Daylight Time, so you have about two days to respond to their tweet to get put in for a random drawing to maybe win a copy of Rainbow Billy, The Curse of the Leviathan. Uh, enjoy, fingers crossed that you win, let's get back to more games. Welcome to Space Mode a narrative adventure filled with colorful worlds and wacky characters. Play as Inspector Domino, an undercover space cat detective, and track down an intergalactic jewel thief. Hi, my name is Luis Alonso, and I'm the game developer for Spaceboat. Since Spaceboat is a narrative adventure that is meant to be enjoyed by all, it was important to give it as many accessibility options as possible. What most people don't know is that I'm also a triple amputee, and one of the few disabled solo game devs that are out there, so I take accessibility seriously. Last year, we mentioned the work that was done to have a high contrast art direction for people with colorblindness, as well as having text for everything that was spoken or heard for people with hearing impairments. This year, we added a number of additional features. Spaceboat now has an options menu accessible at all times from within seconds of starting the game. We recently added single stick controls to reduce the need for multiple inputs. Although other buttons might be needed, this makes the majority of the game playable with one hand. Similarly, we added an auto-run feature, which reduces the number of buttons that need to be pressed. Additionally, we added input sensitivity controls so that all players can fine-tune the game to their liking. Although we mentioned that we put a lot of work into providing a high contrast art direction, we felt it was a good idea to include colorblind shader modes. We know it's not a well-loved feature, but if it helps someone in the slightest, it's there. On Steam, we also added the ability to switch controls on demand. This means that if you're playing with a mouse and keyboard, you can switch to an Xbox controller at any time. As a person with a physical disability, I know it's handy to have as many inputs available to adjust to gameplay changes. Please note that these features are currently available in our demo, which can be found on Xbox, PlayStation, and Steam. If you think that Spaceboat could benefit from further improvement, please contact us at contact at recombobulator.ca. Thank you from everyone at Recombobulator Games. 
We at Paint Bucket Games believe that everyone should have the opportunity to enjoy the games we create, regardless of ability. We are currently developing The Dark Files, a historical investigation and courtroom game based on true crimes. We want our games to be inclusive and welcoming to all players, which is why we've implemented several accessibility features. For one, players can choose their own difficulty and even customize it further to match their needs. The Darkest Files also features mouse-only gameplay. This allows players to play the game just by clicking with one hand, making it accessible to those who use adaptive controllers as well. In addition to mouse-only gameplay, we've also made it easy for players to switch seamlessly between input devices, such as keyboard, mouse or controller. Of course, their sensitivity can be adjusted as well. Since players work with documents while investigating, we are also very mindful of the readability of our fonts and texts and always offer a transcription. For dialogues, there are real-time subtitles available. While developing, we are in contact with testers with impairments and want to continue to learn about accessibility. Hi everyone, Laura here again. Thank you so much for tuning into this year's Accessibility Summer Showcase. As a reminder, we have a Steam sale page for this year's Summer Showcase, so you can find most of this year's games all in one place on Steam if any of them caught your interest. We've got one final trailer for you before we wrap up, but before that, I want to make a quick announcement. The Accessibility Summer Showcase is a bit of a passion project for me, and it's something that I find a lot of joy in producing. As such, I'd like to try expanding it just a little. In December of 2024, I'm going to attempt to publish the Accessibility Winter Showcase. It'll be just like the Summer Showcase, just happening at the other end of the year. The hope is that we can provide a spotlight for accessible video games whose announcement windows might not line up well with our usual summer event. If you're a developer who would be interested in featuring in the Accessibility Winter Showcase, email lauracbuzzofficial at gmail.com and we can discuss specifics. More official information will be made available in the coming weeks. There's no guarantee that the Accessibility Winter Showcase will return in future years, but I'd like to give it a go and see if it's something that I can publish sustainably. Thank you all again for watching. Please enjoy our last trailer, and I hope you have an accessible day. Hey everyone, I'm Darren, the developer of Danfolk, a miniature survival city builder about bringing light back to the world. I designed Danfolk to be the perfect entryway, into the city builder strategy game genre. It's a simple game without complex menus to navigate or endless tutorials. A unique element of Dawnfolk is that you can collect resources by playing small, exciting mini games. But one day, a player contacted me and told me he could not enjoy the game because those mini games required too much button mashing and dexterity. That made me so sad that I quickly updated the demo within the hour with a button to disable the minigames. He was very grateful, and watching him play afterwards really motivated me to add more accessibility features. Unlike most strategy games, Dawnfog is completely playable with any controller you like. You can also activate haptic feedback to better understand what's happening in the game. Dawnfog is also a narrative game, where you can reshape the story. The text is big, but you can change that 8-bit pixel font to a more readable one. You can also open the journal to read previous dialogue entries in case you need a little reminder. There are only a few key information on the screen at any time, and everything is big enough to make sure you can easily read it. The game uses signs, shapes, and high contrast colors, so you can play it whatever type of colorblindness you might have. You can also activate a narrator that's gonna read everything for you. Middle. Forest, plain, tense, wheat field, awesome, the wheat field produces food every day. There are tons of audio cues, but you can also perfectly play the game without any sound. Downfolk plays in real time, however no worries, you can post time whenever you want. The game can be played with different levels of difficulty, and you can save any time, so don't worry about making a mistake. If you're stuck, Lueur will always come back to you with some advice. There's no jump scares in the game, 
but you do have a few screen shakes and flashes that you can disable. The game is still in development, and I'll be sure to add more accessibility features in the future. Play the demo on Steam, and let me know what you think. Have fun! If you're watching on Twitch, stay tuned for a live.